How's it going guys, Dom here. In this video, we're gonna talk about what to do if you're struggling in your job search and if you have concerns about saturation, especially when it comes to picking a programming language. So, I got a question from one of my subscribers that basically said, hey look, I'm looking into web development, I'm really concerned that it's saturated, and I really wanted to talk about it in this video because I do have first-hand experience in this kind of field. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take you back to about seven or five to seven years ago. So back in 2015, I heavily got uh, into dropshipping when I was in college. So if you're not familiar with what dropshipping is, it's basically you're finding products from China and then you're selling it on your own Shopify store and you're selling it to American customers, Canadian customers, Australian customers at a profit. So basically you're a middleman, right? And during around 2015, 2016, this is a pretty lucrative opportunity because the main method of, uh, of running traffic was through Facebook ads. And during that time, you know, Facebook ads was kind of a novel thing and people were not really uh, that too familiar. So a lot of the ads that did show up on the platform, people thought it was really, really cool and the algorithm was actually pretty good. And obviously you got the whole data leak stuff and then meta started going down and then what you saw from 2016 to beyond is you saw that uh, Facebook ads got more competitive because a lot of people started appearing out of the cracks and they started you know selling these dropshipping courses and they started selling how dropshipping was a great opportunity for you to make six figures, seven figures, eight figures, right? These are the claims that they're making during that time. Right, so it's kind of a gold rush that was happening on that aspect, and what you saw was it got really, really saturated. And right now, uh, in dropshipping, because I still kind of follow it passively from time to time, I still get the ads on YouTube from these dropshippers and stuff like that. You know, it's one of the most competitive things that you can because the ads aren't as good. You know, there's a lot of people out there trying to do dropshipping. So it's very, very saturated. And we're seeing the same thing when it comes to web development, when it comes to this whole learn to code movement as well, where you're getting a lot of people who are selling the information out there and they're, you know, pitching how it's such a good opportunity. You're having boot camps that are coming out every single day telling you how you can become job ready in 12 weeks, for example. So, you know, I'm seeing the same saturation patterns that I saw back in dropshipping. Now here's the thing, right? Saturation isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a sign of demand, right? But there are different things that you need to do when you see that there is saturation, right? And so I'll give you an example when it comes to dropshipping, right? So back when I was dropshipping, the 2015-2016 way was you run ads at $5 a day per product with a general store and then you just keep testing all these different kinds of products, right? And you see which one sticks. As 2016 went on, what you saw was you saw that you had to put a lot of money into one product trying to make it work instead of just, you know, having these $5 ads keep testing until you find something that works. Now why am I saying all this? Why am I talking about dropshipping in a video about programming and learning how to code? It's because we're seeing the same phenomenon that it's going to take for you to be successful nowadays, right? So when it comes to saturation, what you need to do is you need to double down on whatever language that is, whether that's JavaScript, whether that's Python, whether that's iOS, whether that's Swift, whether that's Kotlin, it doesn't really matter. Instead of, you know, going Kotlin and then going Swift and then JavaScript and then Python and then C++, right? What you need to do is you need to double down on one and get really, really good at that particular language. And you want to learn everything there is to know about that particular language. Now, what do I mean by that? Since I'm an iOS developer, I'm going to give you some iOS relevant, uh, relevant examples here. So what you want to do is you want to create core data projects. You want to create AR kit projects. You want to create core ML projects. You want to make uh, Firebase projects. You want to make them in, make some in MVVM. You want to make some in MVC. You want to make some in MVP. You need to have 
all of these products and you need to go all in on iOS development, right? And then when you're reaching out to these companies, you need to also go all in when it comes to your outreach strategies, right? Because think about it, at the time of recording this video, we're experiencing kind of a downturn in the tech landscape, right? So what's happening is a lot of people are getting laid off. A lot of people from these really prestigious companies like Google, like Facebook, like Amazon, they're all getting laid off and they're all entering the job market. And then you have people like us, our self-taught devs, which are also on the job market trying to get an opportunity. And then you have to put yourself in the recruiter's position. If I'm a recruiter and I'm getting a whole bunch of resumes, and you know, if you look on LinkedIn right now, you can see that some entry-level job postings have a thousand candidates or a thousand applications, right? So how is it that you're going to stand out? Like if you're, I'm a recruiter, I see somebody who has Facebook or Meta on their resume and Google on the resume and you see some other guy who maybe has an irrelevant degree and has no experience who are you really gonna pick right you're gonna pick the guy that has the thing experience well how do you beat that guy right what you need to do is you to beat that guy is you need to beat him through volume right so you need to be the guy who's literally spamming people in their inbox and I made a video on this and I'm gonna link it in the description below on how exactly I do it, you basically need to be spamming the recruiter saying why you're a good fit for this role. And you don't want to stop there. You just don't want to stop with the recruiter because inevitably, even though the recruiter likes what you have to offer, they're going to send it to the hiring manager, right? The hiring manager is a very, very strict, right? So you're also going to send one to the hiring manager. And then you're also going to send one to the engineering manager. And then you're going to also send one to the CEO right? You're going to send one to every single contact that you can think of in order to get yourself known. Because it's not just about your skill set. Now that might be important, right? It might be important that you know ARKit. It's important that you know Core ML. It's important that you know MVVM, right? It's important that you know Core Data and Data Persistence and iOS. All of that stuff is necessary, right? And all of that stuff is help, going to help you stand out. But what a lot of software engineers get wrong is they get wrong the sales part of it, the marketing part of it, because honestly, none of us are salesmen, let's be honest. We want to sit in front of a computer and code, but the reality is in a really, really j tough job market, you need to be a salesman, right? And you need to be a damn good one in order to stand out from all the other candidates that are clearly more qualified than you. You need to be the Larry Bird of... You need to be the Larry Bird of development and of sales, right? If you're not familiar with Larry Bird, basically he was a professional NBA player. He's one of the greatest Boston Celtics players of all time. And one of his main things that got him to this level was his work ethic, right? So every day before school, he would shoot, I think, 500 hoops or 500 jump shots. And he wanted to make 99 in a row before he could end it or else he had to start over. And you need to do the same thing when it comes to reaching out to recruiters and engineering managers and hiring managers and C-level executives, as well as your, uh, as well as your development projects. Because let's be honest, if, you're, if you made it to the end of this video and this resonated with you, you're probably like you and I. You know, we don't come from Ivy League backgrounds. You know, we don't come from you know, we don't have internships at big fan companies, right? We don't have the most impressive resumes. So in order to get through that, in order to overcome that, you need to supplement it with lots and lots and lots of volume, right? You need to be the one who shoots 500 jump shots every single day, who wants to get 99 in a row before you end it. And I acknowledge that it can be tiring. You know, you get home from a 9 to 5 job, you're dead tired, you still need to work out, you still need to spend time with your children, right? And you still need to learn how to code, right? I understand, and I'm going through that right now. But at the end of the day, that is what is key if we want to stand out in this depressed job market. And if we want to deal with the saturation, right? So in summary, what we want to do is we want to increase the volume of our projects. We want to pick one language or pick one framework and go all in on it. So 
going all in on Python or all in on JavaScript or all in on Swift. It doesn't really matter. All in on one and then all in on your uh, on your outreach efforts. Reach out to the hiring manager. Reach out to the recruiter. Reach out to the engineering manager. Reach out to the senior software engineers. Reach out to the CEO. Supplement it with volume because volume is the only thing that's going to help you succeed. Right? So this video was helpful. Don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps support the channel and lets you know that you enjoy content like this. And I'll see you in the next video.